The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, Do you, to you, I will give their glory and all this authority for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the de devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. This past week, one of the signs that I happened to see said something along the lines of, if you manage to save all your chocolate throughout Lent and eat it at Easter, it really wasn't giving up anything. And I thought to myself, well, how did they know? <laughs> Nonetheless, this morning in our gospel, we find Jesus going out into the wilderness. And you see, the thing is, we often think of the wilderness as kind of like a desert, you know, with rocks and sand, and it's dry, and the sun is beating down on you. But the thing is, the wilderness does not have to be somewhere off in a desert. The, de the wilderness sometimes can be green and lush and bright. The wilderness can be anywhere that we go because the wilderness can be something that goes with us. When you're continually mourning that person that you have lost, when you're struggling with depression or heartache or pain, those become the wildernesses sometimes that we can get lost in. But Jesus goes out into the wilderness to find out who he truly is. In Luke's gospel for this morning, we hear of the different temptations that Jesus faced, but it begins first by him going to the River Jordan and being baptized. And Luke gives us this very polite, and Jesus was led out into, led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Well, the Greek word is not led. The Greek word is something along the lines of Jesus got his butt kicked out into the wilderness. <laughs> Loose translation. <laughs> Jesus finds himself out in the wilderness, and he is tempted by Satan. And so after 40 days of eating nothing, Satan comes up to him and says, So, Jesus, you look like you might be a little bit hungry. How about doing a miracle and turning this, bread, this stone into bread? But Jesus does not fall for that first temptation. That first temptation, the temptation of self, is to think only about yourself. Now, how many of us face that temptation regularly? All your hands better be up. <laughs> we all face that temptation of only thinking about ourselves, don't we? More often than not, our society, our world tells us, take care of yourself, look out for number one, only be concerned with you. But how far does that actually get us? I always love the adage of, you know, I'm a self-made person, or pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And I always ask the question, well, who made the boots? You see, the thing is, we don't get to do this 
on our own. And the temptation is to think that it is only about us. That I got to where I am because of me and no one else. And the reality is we need each other. So Jesus reminds us in that first temptation that who we are comes from recognizing that we are all in this together. That I need you to be complete, much like you need me to be complete, and together we reflect better God's kingdom. So the first temptation we must overcome is a temptation to only take care of ourselves. Well, then Jesus goes on, and this devil takes him up to a high thing and shows him all the kingdoms of the earth and says to him, I will give you all of this power and authority and everything here, and all you have to do is worship me. Say a little prayer, bend a little knee, you know, say some good things about me and just worship me, and you can have the entire world as your kingdom. The temptation that Jesus faced is a temptation of idol. When we create something as an idol before God, when we let our possessions possess us, our idol has taken over. When we realize or when we try to somehow equate our self-worth about who we are with the things that we possess, we fall into the trap of listening to that voice of idol. Earlier this week, I was reading a story about a Wall Street banker who for 20 years, his entire goal in life was to make as much money as he could make. He did a great job of making money, but he lost his, his, lost his wife, doesn't speak to his kids, but he has the world of money right now and nobody to share it with. So the challenge for us sometimes is to let the things that we own, own us. I always find it really interesting that, you know, when you drive into the bigger house neighborhoods that you see more and more protected by so-and-so. <laughs> so we've created, you know, we, we've accumulated all this money and all this stuff, and so we need to have more security to keep the more stuff that we have safer, and the bigger the house, the more the security, and on and on. To what end? You see, the temptation sometimes is to think that our self-worth comes from the things that we own. And Jesus in, saying, Jesus in rebuking the devil this morning says, serve God alone and let everything else worry about itself. We cannot be subject to those idols that call us to be something other than who we are. Well, then the last thing, Jesus takes him up on top of the temple and shows him the precipice down below and says, okay, you didn't want the bread, you didn't want the kingdoms of the earth, jump. All you have to do is jump off, and if you get saved, you will prove to me that you are the Son of God, and I will give you everything here. And Jesus says to him, well, no thank you. You cannot put the Lord your God to the test. The temptation that he passed, perhaps the worst one, the temptation of proof. Prove to me that you love me. Prove to me that you are good enough. Prove to me that you are smart enough. Prove to me that you can do this job. Anybody ever heard anything like that? <laughs> The temptation is to invite those people that we love or those people we work with to prove who they are first before we can do something. And it's a big temptation to invite others to prove because we want to know that we are loved. We want to know that you are taking care of me. We want to know these things. But what the temptation that Jesus faced was to prove who he was. The challenge for you and I is to remember not who we are, but whose we are. We belong to a God who will not ever let us go. We belong to a God who calls us beloved all the time, over and over. We belong to a God who says to us, you are good enough, you are smart enough, you are beautiful enough, you are enough 
for the God who has been calling you since before you were born. But we don't hear that message very often in our world. If you turn on the TV, it doesn't say, you're good enough, don't buy my shampoo. It says, your skin is dried and cracked, so you need to buy my lotion. Or you need to have perky, bright, glowing hair, so buy my shampoo. Because what you have right now is definitely not working. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our society says. You are not enough, but when God, God says to us, you are enough. Whatever you think your shortcoming may be, whatever you think the things that are your warts may be, God says, I love you just as you are. You are enough. So you probably were asking, well, what do these three temptations have to do with the rest of our gospel? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it has to do with our identity as followers of Jesus Christ. About two years ago, someone stole my identity. They managed to get a hold of my social security number and began to open up a whole bunch of accounts and all this stuff. And I had to call up the credit cards and all this stuff to prove to them who I was. Now, if you ever have to call up a credit card or a bank or something to try to tell them that you are who you are, good luck. <laughs> it is not a fun process. <laughs> But somehow I had to say to them, you know, I am Dion K. Johnson. This is my social security, not the other person who's been using my identity. And it really forced me to figure out, well, who am I? <laughs> and so what this all is about is about who we are as children of God. It's about who our identities are and that God who calls us beloved. You see, God isn't concerned about how many wrinkles we have or how big our bank account may be. God is concerned with you and I, with us, with loving us as we are. So Lent is an opportunity for us to go through those wildernesses in our lives and discover once again that we are beloved, that God takes delight in each and every single one of us. So my challenge for you this week, my sisters and brothers, as you go through this, this season of Lent, to look into the mirror. To look into the mirrors wherever you find them and love the reflection that is looking back. Let me say that again. To look into the mirrors wherever you find them and love the reflection looking back. Exactly <laughs> what he said. He said it perfectly. <laughs> Love your reflection because God loves you just the way you are. Let this Lent be an opportunity for us to go into the wilderness and discover Christ's footsteps who have gone before, loving us and calling us always, always back to a God who in love will never, ever, 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 ever let us go. Amen.